What's up guys? Welcome back to Fisher Hex. This is Travis here. Uh, today we're going to be doing a complete guide to biopellet reactors. Now you guys have requested this video several times, so I just want to get out all the information and answer all the questions that you guys have been asking. Uh, in this video, uh, some of the topics that we're going to cover are uh, why would you need a biopellet reactor in the first place? How does that biopellet reactor work? Uh, should you go with DIY or new and add some plumbing tips in there? Uh, then we're going to go into how to start the biopellet reactor for the first time and then finally ending the video with some maintenance and general tips. All right, so without further ado, let's go ahead and get into it. All right, the first part of this is why would you need a biopellet reactor in the first place? Now, biopellets exist for one reason and one reason only, and that is to remove nitrates from the water column. The only other efficient way in the hobby to remove nitrates would be with water changes or a very large remote refugium. I've also found that having a biopellet reactor allows me to not have to do as large of water changes on a weekly or bi-weekly basis to keep the nitrate level in check. Um, I also found that I can uh, have a little bit more fish and feed a little bit more, but uh, don't get it confused. It's not an excuse not to do water changes or to overfeed your fish. Uh, what will happen is uh, eventually the biopellet reactor can only do so much, can only process so much, and if you're continually uh, slamming your tank with food or overstocking your tank with tons and tons of fish, uh, you will have an issue and you will have algae problems, so just keep that in mind. Okay, moving on. How does a biopellet reactor actually work? Now, biopellets are a type of carbon dosing, just like dosing vodka or sugar in the reef tank. It has the same principles and uh, it's basically the same thing, but it's a more manageable, easier to implement on your reef tank and requires less maintenance. Now, uh, if you were to dose vodka, you would have to either do it manually or put it on a dosing pump and, uh, you know, obviously check the levels and go out and purchase vodka whenever you need it. Uh, sugar, obviously, you'd have to do that manually, either on a daily or every other day basis to keep the uh, bacteria at a certain level. Now, most people find that bio pellets are much easier, um, but there are some things that I'll get into later in the video that uh, will either make or break your success with bio pellets. All right, so uh, what are bio pellets actually made up of? Well, they are a biodegradable uh, polymer type of media. Now, this media uh, will feed and promote the growth of aerobic and anaerobic, can't even pronounce that right, so I apologize if I butchered it, uh, bacteria. Now, basically, this bacteria primary sources to feed on the media and feed on the nitrates in the water column. Now the whole process is uh, basically you're going to force water through the bottom of the reactor up through the media allowing it to tumble at a, an efficient rate. Now you'll see in my video here how my bio pellets actually tumble and I found that uh, it's great success the way they are. Now what happens guys is the uh, bacteria grows on this media and as it's bouncing around the old bacteria pretty much gets knocked off the media and then it gets uh, sent through the top of the reactor into the skimmer for, and then allows it to be uh, skimmed off into the collection cup. Now once this old bacteria is broken off the uh, media, the new bacteria has room to grow and continue the whole process and pretty much that happens continuously and pretty much the only thing you have to do over time is add bio pellets every six to ten weeks depending on how your flow is in that reactor but that's usually what I have to do just to kind of top them off and as you can see on the reactor I have a line so basically I turn all the flow off and pretty much just cap it off at that line okay when it comes to what reactor you should use in your system it's really your call you have two choices you can go the DIY route like I did or you can go ahead and buy one uh, from like a bulk reef supply or something like that uh, that's actually specifically made for bio pellets that's your call whatever you uh, want to do but I personally like to do the uh, DIY route just because it kind of saves me some money in the long run and, it, and I like making the projects and uh, doing that kind of stuff with the reef tank but that's me uh, you do what works best for you but at the end of the day uh, the biopellet reactor is a pretty simple concept you're going to force water down through the media that will force it to come up through the media allowing it to tumble efficiently now uh, if you guys have seen any of the previous videos which I will add links to both of them in the description below so you can see how I made the reactors but basically what it is guys I made the uh, phosphate 150 earlier on I upgraded to the phosphate 550 because I wanted to do a little bit more bio pellets but I found that I couldn't get enough flow through the 550 to allow the bio pellets to tumble efficiently so I ended up moving back to the 150 and that's where I'm at now okay the most important part about a bio pellet reactor is being able to control the flow now you want to be able to either turn it down or turn it up based on how much media you actually have in your reactor now the uh, phosphate 550 and 150 come with a ball valve which allows you to adjust the flow and I usually adjust it on the input not on the output um, some people uh, can do it on the output but I've just found that it's easier to do it on the input you get a little bit more controllability um, 
What happens if you don't get enough flow in the reactor? The media itself will actually turn into a solid block and is useless at that point. And if you get too much flow, you end up shooting bio pellet media out the top of the reactor into the skimmer. And if any of you guys see me uh, clean the skimmer section of my sump, you will see that I have bio pellet media all over the place because I'm always messing with stuff and uh, you know shooting media out the top. When it comes to plumbing your reactor into your system, you can either use the manifold style like I have to save on the amount of pumps and electricity used for your reef tank. Uh, but if you don't have a manifold, you can go ahead and connect something like a MaxiJet 1200 or a utility pump. It's totally fine. It works great. Just be able to control the flow going into the reactor and you'll be good to go. Okay, now it's time to move into the most important part of this video and that is starting the biopellet reactor for the first time. Now this will make or break your success. You can do a lot of damage with biopellets in a very short period of time if you do not do it correctly. Now what I'm about to go over is what I've done personally, what I've done for my subscribers, and what I've done for clients here around Harrisburg. Now the first thing you want to do is go slow. Can't stress that enough. Go slow. Now most biopellet media is about 100 milliliters per 25 gallons of water. I have 500 milliliters in my biopellet reactor now, uh, but guys, you do not, let me say this again, do not add the full amount of biopellets to your reactor at once. That is a no-no. What's going to happen if you add 500 milliliters at one time to a system that's never had biopellet reactor, you will uh, get the bacteria bloom, which will strip the system, basically the entire tank of uh, nitrates basically zero nitrates is a bad thing you never want to be at completely zero unless you're running a zeovit system but uh, if you strip the tank completely of nutrients you will kill your coral you will kill your fish it will happen it's it's not good there's a lot of people who have done that so what i recommend you do is go ahead and take the first 100 milliliters say your whole system requires 500 take the first 100 put it in the bio pellet reactor and let it run for a week. Now, don't do anything for one week, just let it run at a good tumble rate and then go ahead and add another 100 milliliters the following week. Now, what I usually do is I usually let that first 200 milliliters run for two to three weeks. If you have, uh, you know, your system seems to be doing well, test your nitrates, see how they are, what levels they are at, and then uh, just make sure they're not too, too low, but not, you know, through the roof high either. Uh, then what you do is just go ahead and continue to add 100 milliliters at a time every week or every other week until you have reached your system's capacity. Now my system, like I said, is 500 milliliters and that's where I'm going to stay at. Once you have reached your tank's capacity, I recommend you go ahead and turn off the reactor, use a marker and mark where the media is at in that reactor. Now, uh, what I usually do is just go ahead and check the reactor's uh, level like every six to 10 weeks, see where it's at and then top off the media as needed. Okay, moving on to the maintenance portion of the video. Uh, when it comes to maintenance on a biopellet reactor, it's pretty simple, it's pretty quick, but uh, I find that I have to do it every two to three weeks, uh, depending on what media I'm using. Now, uh, before I switched to the bulk resupply media, I was using two little fishies, and I found that I had to clean my biopellet reactor literally every week. Uh, basically what happens is this uh, bacteria film, and it comes out and it just clogs everything. Trust me, it clogs return pumps, it clogs the skimmer, it clogs the hose that's going to the skimmer, and it clogs the biopellet reactor, which will all reduce uh, the efficiency of the skimmer, and it will reduce the tumble rate in the reactor. One way to know if you have to clean your reactor is if you're not getting a good tumble rate based on the flow that you're putting through it. Now, what I usually do is I just go ahead and take the reactor apart, set the media to the side in some water that's still in the reactor, and then clean that whole top. Run it underneath hot water, scrape with a brush, use the dental pick to clean off any of the harder pieces. And also what I do is I go ahead and I take the hose, and I run hot water through it, bend the hose, and that bacteria will just flow out the other end, and then you can connect it to normal. Uh, usually I do my skimmer maintenance every three months, so I just clean the skimmer at that point, uh, and it's usually not too bad. It takes longer to clog up the skimmer than it does the hose on the biopellet reactor. One thing, guys, if you guys are using biopellets, do clean all your pumps. So if you haven't cleaned your main pump, uh, make sure when you start using bio pellets that you clean your main pump more often. Usually I clean mine every four to six months, depending on um, how the pump actually looks. I could put a flashlight down there and kind of see how dirty it is. But remember to clean your pumps and clean all the uh, output hoses or uh, connections that you have on the bio pellet reactor to make sure you keep a good flow and your equipment doesn't fail. All right, guys, that's pretty much it for this video. I appreciate you watching. But before I let you go, I want to ask you one question, and I want to know what you guys think. Now, do you use a UV sterilizer with your bio pellet reactor or not? Now, a lot of people say you can. A lot of people say you can't, how it affects the bacteria. I want to know what you guys think. Go ahead and put that in the comment section below, or you can add it to the Building a Successful Reef Facebook page. Either way, I just want to know what you guys think. Now, I personally...
personally don't use a UV sterilizer, mainly for the fact that I don't have one, and I really don't have plans of purchasing one, at least not for this system. All right, so anyways, I hope this answered all your questions. If you have any more, let me know, and as always, guys, I'll see you next time. Peace. <laughs>